All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the CLC Paint YouTube channel. And we'll just continue where we left off on this canvas before it gets any drier than it already has. Sometimes it helps me, though, to let the background dry just a little bit before continuing on so the colors don't take on those colors so much. But that's kind of counter to what normally works here. But I'm just gonna take some white and the fan brush and we'll see where this, where this brush takes us in this landscape. Now, I wanna start with some little clouds. Maybe not even so little. Maybe they'll be good sized clouds. And I reload, get some more. I'm just using the corner there. And maybe, shoot, maybe doing circles. Maybe one comes in from up there like that. Those are off the side of the canvas. And load up a little bit more. Maybe right there. Mm. Excellent. And maybe that kind of happens like that. A little flurry guy. And maybe the same over here. There we go. And I feel like maybe something, something might be happening right up there too. Who knows? Just have fun with it. Now, set that brush down temporarily. Grab ourselves a clean dry brush. Maybe we'll use a two inch brush. It has way more bristles and it blends, blends a lot faster. I'm gonna turn this just my angle. Because of the sunlight shining in here, it makes these look a bit brighter than they actually are. So don't worry if yours looks a little different. Just kind of soften that one up. I'm gonna come at the bottom, the bottom base area of these clouds. I'm gonna do little circles. Just letting the bristles of the brush soften out the base. We're gonna do it for each one of these. Get that guy. Yeah. There we go. circles and then these little stringy ones will just just kind of brush them softly till they get as soft as you want them to be now now we're going to take these top edges and lightly fluff them up ever so lightly you get little stringy things that are coming off of them those are good those are good Pardon my arm being in the way there. Do this real soft, especially if your paint's real wet. And we'll soften, soften up there. Soften that. And then we'll just come across, kind of blend. Just take away the brush strokes. Now, see, it got a little more white than I would have liked up there, but that's fine. That's fine. And, you know, I think that's all the clouds we'll need today for this little, this little scenery. Just gonna blend these a little more up here, create an extra softness. There we go. I like that. Now. Let's see, let's see where we end up going. Maybe there's a distant, distant mountain back there. So we're gonna take the same fan brush. Let's go through 
Shoot, just grab a touch of Prussian blue. And then outside of the pile, we'll allow the white and the Prussian to mix, kind of light, lighter version there. And we'll just take that and let's draw in just a distant, just a distant peak. Kind of does something like that. See where I pushed real hard there, the white started coming out underneath of it. And we'll just pull a little color down. Maybe, maybe I'll add a little, just a little more color to that and give it a second little, second little peak there. See, that's a distant, real distant mountain. Once again, because of the sunlight, it looks brighter than it actually is. It's not quite that light blue. There, maybe that's a, maybe that's a better show of it. But anyways, and if it's too bright for you, you can always make yours darker. Always make yours darker. Now I'm going to come in with the two-inch brush and just just pull that down and let it disappear into nothingness. Becomes one with the sky. And on this side over here, let that blend off. There we go. We got ourselves just a distant, maybe indication of some rolling, rounded looking mountains. And maybe we'll do a Maybe we'll do all our mountains with the fan brush today instead of the palette knife and see, see if we can have success in that area. So next, I'm gonna take with the knife a bit of that Prussian blue. Maybe that's even too much. I'm gonna set it up there. And then a good amount of the crimson down here in the corner. And let's just set that right up there and allow the Prussian that was on the knife to mix with the crimson. And I'll grab this little bit and mix it in. I don't need a ton of paint here. We're gonna get a real, real purpley color. Maybe I want it to be a bit more blue. Place that down and wet the knife off. Get yourself a paper towel. There we go. And we're gonna take the same brush because it's got that light blue and the white mixing on it. And we're gonna grab just a touch of that color and maybe in between this area right here. We'll get ourselves See if I can get some light on that. Yeah, see this darker than that, but not as dark as that. So we get this medium purple here. Medium. It's a lot darker than the blue we put on here. And maybe, yeah, I think right there. Maybe it's a little taller than this one too. It comes comes down like that and blocks it right off. And then it has a rounded, rounded top, just like these guys. It comes right down and blocks off our sun back there, which is okay, don't, don't get upset about it. And see, this will turn green if you have too much blue. So that's why we made it purple. I'm gonna grab a bit more of the crimson. Mix it with our color there. So we have a definite purple and not a blue. Because yellow and blue make green. And we'll just get that. Get 
There we go. I like that. Real, we'll do real simple, just a single, single little mountain here with maybe one little bump on the side. There we go. But these will stand out against that yellow, super intense when we're done. Super intense. I'm just gonna make a taller peak by pressing the brush in there and giving it a little pull. And just kind of work this color down. There we go. Now, we'll go back to this brush, our blender, and push hard and pull down. Now, if your canvas is too dry, it won't blend down very well. Like mine's already drier than it should be but it's still kind of pulling down. I just want a soft, misty base. There we go. There we go. You can see that color is even coming through the mountain now. Or we over blend it like I do sometimes. I think I'm going to want to. I don't like that color. But maybe just to add some, add some character to these distant mountains, we'll give them the slightest, slightest shadows. Mm. See that kind of brings them into the family of this purple, purple theme we got going here. We're doing one side, that side, and then pulling this way for the opposite side of the mountain, just like we did over here. All right, maybe a little darker. It comes down like that. Same with that one. There we go. So you just play with these things. Whatever you see in your mind, just let it kind of happen. Because see, that brings this down further now. You can work with that. Just add it as you go. Mm. And maybe we'll lift straight up like there's little, little trees at the bottom of that mountain. Maybe on these ones back there too. All right. Actions, and then once again, we'll soften up, soften up the bottom of that. Maybe just soften these guys too. There we go. All right, that was fun. Maybe hmm, I feel like I do want a little little highlight on those mountains. So let's go to our white here and just grab a tiny little roll. And shoot, maybe the shadows are on the back side because the sun is over here. So I'm gonna flip the knife around and just copying the edge of the mountain with the edge of the knife. We'll just add in a little soft, soft as you can get it, just some highlight. If you've got a little shake, that'll kind of help. That'll kind of help. And then I'm going to let this white blend purple underneath because I don't want these highlights to be too intense. I want the yellow to be what really stands out at the end. At least that's what I'm thinking at the moment. All right, let's grab another touch of white. And maybe... Maybe there's a little action right there. It comes down like so. Stand like so. I'm gonna want to add some more white here at the base. See, the more you scrape across it, the more it'll blend with the color that's underneath. Now. 
Ooh, I got some yellow in the white there. And that always adds some beautiful variants. Beautiful variants to your colors there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, let me think. We're going to need, we'll use the small edge of the knife. Grab just, just a touch once more. See, these ones are way back in the distance. So if I make it that bright, it's going to look like it's right next to this mountain. So I'm going to place it on there, our little whites, wherever they are. And then I'm really going to rub them till they, till they blend right in with that blue. See, that's still even a little too bright for my taste. So I'm going to go back to our color we made the mountain with. I'm just going to blend in with the white some of that blue color. Now just to soften that so it's not so intense, I'm just going to lightly brush it with the two inch so I'm not coming over this mountain. But even if, if we do, we can pull back across it like so. Now it's a soft. And we'll just brush these guys. Oh yeah, see? See the distance on those now? It's beautiful. It's beautiful. And that's just accident, so I'm just playing around here. Now, maybe we'll have, shoot, a little, a little white right there, another little peak going in. I always forget where I put my paper towel. It's so bright though, I don't want to have it right right in front of you, you know? All right. Maybe we can tap up and miss that, but I want some of this blue on the back side of this mountain. So I'm gonna grab, once again, some of that blue without grabbing all the dark blues around it. Maybe we'll just get some of this blue over here too. So now that's a lot darker. It's a lot darker, but it gives us the indication. I'm gonna grab a touch of the white and let's put it through this blue down here. Let's try it, that color out. I have a bit more of a light blue color. And back here. I'm just gonna let that smear. Kind of let a little ridge be in between the blues there. I'm gonna brush this down just like I did over there so we can soften it up. Just trying to give a, a shadowy accent behind. I don't want too much over here because mixing with the yellow, that'll turn green. So let's keep it up in this purple area of the mountain there. And maybe, pardon the arm, maybe, just want a little bit where there's shadows in this, in this picture here. All right, I think we'll leave that, that's pretty beautiful. Now, we're gonna wanna blend that out, come back to our two inch brush, it's been our blender the whole way through. And just softly, don't wanna just, don't wanna ruin it, just wanna soften it. So it looks, looks like the rest of our scenery. Right down here, we're gonna tap, pull it. Don't destroy your whites though. Do some tapping to bring, bring the color down here. Of the base of our mountain shape going. And see, these colors are reflecting already down here. Kind of. We'll have some trees and stuff. Now, I'm just going to want to tap into our white just a little bit. Not too much. Sorry for the shaking table. And 
just in there, just as careful as you can, just kind of soften that blue. And then just give, give the bottom edge of these whites a soft up sweep. And that should complete our mountain. I think I'm gonna blend these blues right here just a, just a bit more. Just pushing and rubbing up and down. There we go. I think, you know, I never can stop with my mountains. Whew. Never can stop. The highlights are the fun, fun area. So maybe right in there. Grab a little more white. And something like so. And then we'll need a little little shadow to the back of that. And we'll see if we can blend that in, make that look nice. Huh? I'm just gonna tap. Uh, let's just tap it in and then sweep. Pull it down, get that shape. Nice. And then over here, tap this direction. Soften her up. And then just lift up. Don't destroy it. And that is a nice. Nice looking mountain. I like it. I like it. Now we'll just leave that just how it is. And time for some trees. Since we've already got this brush with our medium purple, maybe we'll just make some trees with that color. So I'm going to go through some more of that crimson blue purple mixture. Same brush. And heck, let's just make, let's just make, maybe since these foothills are going back here, maybe there's another one that comes down, comes down, lives right there. Like so. And then it goes off and blocks off our mountain there in the distance. Blocks off our mountain. I'm gonna fill this in a little bit. See the white's kind of coming out of the brush because it was in there in the beginning doing the clouds. So it's kind of makes this color a little brighter than what we loaded on the brush. So we're gonna have mist underneath of this. Now, we're going to lift straight up on these to make little, little distant trees. That's the plan anyways. Sometimes it doesn't come out as you plan, but we'll do the best we can. Little distant trees, maybe just lift up across the whole thing. There we go, straight up. Sometimes I get angled here with the way I'm doing this. Straight up, straight up, straight up. Beautiful. That will be a distant forest for us. Distant foothill, forest, whatever you want to call it. And we're gonna to wanna to tap that out. I think we'll just keep using our blender. Now we're gonna get powerful with these taps. So I might get a shaky table over here. I'm trying to tap the base without going over the top of them. And 
is softly sweep that around. And that makes the base down here softer than the top. That way we can do what we're about to do. We're gonna load some more color in the brush. It's gonna get darker. It's gonna get darker. And then we will have ourselves living red. Right there, I think. I'm gonna wanna load a little more. Shoot, let's grab some crimson. Put it right into our pile. Wiggle it, pull it, wiggle it, pull it. And this is gonna be a crimson purple tree. Now this tree is gonna come down in front of that layer. Now my brush is old and it's lost its shape. So I get these weird, weird craggly trees instead of the nice sharp, nice sharp pines that I would prefer to see, but that's fine. That's fine. I think we'll have this be the layer in front of this layer. Yeah, and then we'll make some water down here at the bottom. So maybe, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna start our water already way back there in the distance. Way back there in the distance. So I'm gonna need some liquid white. Give it a good shake. Give her a good shake. And, woo, almost too much. But we'll play with it. Shoot, I hate when it gets all out on the side of the bottle. Cause then when you go, maybe, 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 since we'll be doing some highlights later. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. I'm not sure right now. I'm not sure right now. Maybe I'll just put it on this brush because we like liquid white and we don't want to waste it. So I'll just set it on this brush. And then we'll set this brush out of the way temporarily. And we can apply that liquid white when we need it later. How does that sound? If you're getting value, smash the like button. Leave me a comment below. Let me know what you think about this, but we're not done. We're not done. Mm -hmm. All right. Water lines. So I'm going to take some of that liquid white and pull it out. Cut across. But we don't want our water lines to be that thick. I'm going to tap some of it back on the canvas. Yeah, let's decide where our water lives way back here. Maybe it comes down as it gets closer to us. And we're just slicing, slicing right through the canvas. And that'll bring some of the original yellow color through to us. There, that gives us a distant water line. And I think, I think it would only be right if a slight, a slight reflection underneath of our water line there. So I just took this brush and we're just ever so subtly here. We just want to kind of just want to make an illusion, a little indication of some kind of reflections in the water back there. And we'll take our two inch brush without ruining our water line. If you do, you can go back and do another water line. It's all good. Push and pull down on those just to give them a little smear. 
so they're not so distinct. Maybe a little blending, and then just carefully pull across those guys. There we go. I like that. And if you pull across your waterline, it will make it softer. Let's do that. Make it softer. There we go. Distant waterline. Because if it's so bright, it'll stand out against what's in the front. So let's just, let's just make that whole area real soft back there. There we go. There we go. Yeah. I don't normally use this brush for my dark because this is my highlight brush. As you can tell by how dark this one is, even when it's clean, that's my dark brush. This one's lighter, but I guess it's, we're gonna, I guess we're gonna keep going with the darks with it. So just add a little bit more of that purple on your brush. And maybe this little land area only has two trees. I was gonna make one, but two is always better than one. And just give him a little, just give him a little shape. And maybe they come out to oh something, something like right there, right? And since this is closer. We're going to need just a touch of the dark sienna to make some dirt. A little dirt. So I'm going to put that up here by the yellows. Not too much, just a tiny bit up there. Not too much. Alrighty. Now, take our knife once again, make sure it's wiped off. Grab just a sliver of that dark sienna on the edge of the knife, maybe a little more. And we'll come right down here, the bottom, and decide, decide where our little land area is. You can just scrub it in. That's fine. And then we'll take a pull through the white. Take that white up over here by our brown. We're gonna mix ourselves a brownish white. This is kind of hard the way that I'm holding it, but mix that up and just, just give our dirt a warm little highlight. Nice. I recommend before you do that, that we reflect some color down here. I always forget somehow. Bad technique. <laughs> but it ends up working anyways. So then you just do this, just to give the indication. Yeah, not really. I don't really need to get carried away here. I don't need to get carried away. That was almost carried away. There we go. Now, yeah. back to our reflection brush. Now this time be careful so you don't pull the brown down. Even if you do though, it'll be cool little, cool little reflection. Mm, pull that straight down. Pull that straight down and once you get to where you like it, pull across once, maybe twice, and reflections. Reflections. Now, I don't want to put a waterline on that. So, I'm going to get rid of my light brown color up there, save it for trunks in a little bit. Tree trunks. Tree trunks. <laughs> Makes me think of uh, what's the show? Adventure Time. I think tree trunks, yeah, little elephant, little elephant character. Google that, that picture will give you a laugh. <laughs> All right, now let's put some water lines. Shoot, 
maybe even before we do that, we'll go with our same brush. No, no, let's not do it. Let's use our big, um, well, other clean fan brush. And we'll grab a touch of the white here. Just touch on each side of the brush and then a touch of the liquid. Why just touch? And, and maybe just a touch down here of the purple. There we go. So we get a real light purple. And then maybe we'll add a little bit of blue to that. So we've got almost pure white, but we just barely touched the purple and the blue. And let's just, if you want to put a tree trunk in this, no, maybe this one's farther away. So all we do is we'll just put a cut like so. Give a little poke at the top. There we go. There we go. All right. Now, just that corner. And just barely. Barely touching. I don't want this to be too intense. And I want it to blend pretty good with what's already on there. And we give that guy some little highlights. And we'll come over here to this little tree. And give him some little highlights. And then we'll push up down here in the grassy areas. Very nice. And then we'll just do a little indication down here in the water of that white. And also just like we did first time with the darts, we'll do with the lights, just indicate them. Don't overdo. This is background stuff. Cause we're gonna block this off with some more lighting. I probably didn't even have to do that, but just to show you. Just to show you, then soft, so soft. Softly pull that and come across it. There we go. Nice little, nice little uh, indication of what's going on there. Now, finally, we can put our water line in. Got a little ahead of myself, but that's okay. You know, just take that and. Just saw ourselves in a little water line. I used to really get upset about not get, I didn't get upset, but I, I try over and over to get these water lines perfect. Cause to me it was the difference maker. But now I just kind of, just kind of do it real fast and touch it up once or twice and call it good. But as you can tell, I probably almost overwork it there. But that's nice. I like that. Maybe just a little more right around there. And we'll give a little ripple out here. All right. And see, since I got a little carried away with that, I can just come back and softly brush it off. So it blends in with our picture there. Mm -hmm. Nice, nice. Coming along, coming along. This will be another winter scene apparently. Apparently. Now, yeah. now we can get some Prussian in the brush. Shoot, grab some crimson. Lay that down there, get more paint in the brush, more paint. And since we've left this side left out over here, I think, I think we're gonna have a big tree. He's gonna come down somewhere right there. I'm gonna reload just a touch there and start making him. There we go, I'm pushing harder as you get down towards the base. Excellent. 
And maybe there's some bushy, little bushy things going on down here. And see that white that's been in the brush is continually working throughout this painting to give us a variation of colors rather than just the one flat color that we throw on there. So we're gonna do another tree in the back right here. So I'm gonna grab some more Prussian, more crimson through our purple pile to mix them. And maybe he lives. Hmm. Almost just want to do a massive tree. Yeah, he's like hanging out. Something like that. Comes all the way off the top of the canvas. How about that? There we go. Big massive. Big massive tree happening over here. Reload as constantly as you need to. He comes down and gets shorter, and then we just have bushes down here. I'm just gonna hit randomly. There we go. And it indicates some reflections. Just gonna pull down and across. Nice. Beautiful. Now. Now, let me make a tree trunk. Where's my knife? There it is. Some tree trunk. So now I got this beautiful brown. Beautiful brown. Right there. We'll just touch. Touch. Wherever there might be a tree trunk in your world. Maybe one that's coming in there. Coming in there. Maybe the trunk of that tree is down here. Something like that, right on the edge of the canvas. Seems like it would be to me. Seems like it would be right about yeah, something right there, coming off the edge. All right. Wipe that off. Yeah, before we highlight that, we'll just finish up our land. We'll just finish up our land. Mm -hmm. Tempted to use a one inch, but let's just keep this simple. If you're trying to follow along and paint this for yourself, we'll just continue to use this one single brush. Now I'm loading, loading. I might need a little more crimson. Uh, see, since this is real close over here, maybe there's Tall tree. And see, I don't want to really destroy what I've already got there. I just want to block it to make it look like it's behind what we're doing here. All right? Reload. I'm gonna use all of my paint here, so I'm not wasting. Shoot, let's grab that. Let's grab that crimson. I'm just using all of this. It's almost turning blue now, but that's fine because we've got more away from where the yellow's on. Maybe actually, we'll just see what we end up with. Now I'm gonna to have to pull this out right there. Push it down. This is looking beautiful, huh? Got a lot of distance to it, and that comes across right there. Across right there. Just want to get as much of this color on there as I can. Beautiful. All right. Maybe just to be thorough and complete, 
So you get the last of the paint. I'm just kind of pulling it off of the palette here. See this part's a little bright for me. See how it looks weird. Looks weird. Oh, excuse me. Excuse me there. There we go. Darken that up. Darken that up. And make it look like it sticks out in front of this. In front of this water we got going. Beautiful. Now. Now. Back to our tree trunk color. Just grab some of that. Ooh, that's all right. You just touch this guy's got a wild trunk, maybe. Shoot, maybe there's another one there. Something, who knows? Steal that. There we go. Give him his own. Maybe these guys did need a trunk after all. Let me just touch one in there and then back there. How about that? How about that? Now, highlights, take our fan brush through the white again. Get a good amount this time. Good amount of liquid white. And I'm going to come down to our purple area where we touched it before. Get some of that. Shoot, get some of the crimson. Just so we don't have pure white. And we go with the purple theme of our landscape here. Oh yeah. And just, just subtly. Don't want to destroy our dark areas. But just come down and put some highlights on this tree. And I think that's so purple that I actually want some blue. I want some blue to this highlight color. Grabbing some more liquid white here, pulling through the blue like we did before. Tap it. Yeah, there we go. Maybe this tree gets more blue as it comes down here. And remembering the shapes of our little branches. Some more touch of the white. And one more touch of the blue. There we go. And that comes down to the base of our tree there. And we'll come do this side and then we'll do the grassy areas at the bottom. So once again, a little more, I've almost got way too much liquid white in the brush here. Too liquid, see how far it went up. Whoops. I loaded it the wrong way, at least for my standards. Some more white. Touch of the phthalo. Yeah, there we go. Touch of that phthalo blue. Make it nice and cold looking. Cold looking on these highlights. And I'm just tapping, just barely tapping. There's so much white and blue going on here. It'll all kind of blend together in the right way. And that just comes down there, just like so. Just loading some more. Maybe a little touch of the white. Whoa. There we go. Blending nicely. And at the bottom, let it be darker. Let it be darker. There we go. There we go. And maybe there's just a little shadow back here underneath of these bushes, back in that corner there. And then our grassy areas, just by pushing up. Just by pushing up, but if you destroy all your darks, like this little spot, it won't have depth. So we want to keep those little dark areas in there. There, there are friends. And then we'll just echo some of that below the water, just like so. 
We'll come over here, use my finger on the top there again and get a touch more of your highlight color, varying between the purples and the blues. And shoot, maybe I'll get some thick white. Oh, I've got a good idea. There's that. That right down there, all snowy. Or you can keep it dark if you want to, that's up to you. Remember our friend that we put the liquid white on earlier? Let's, let's tap him on the palette here. Almost called my palette the canvas. Let's tap him into some of that. And shoot, pull through, pull through some more. And we're just gonna press some nice little bush shapes. That stick out over the water there. And then do these in layers. So there's a little dark area in between. Now I get closer to you. So you can, now remember the sun's making it brighter than it is. If there was a shadow on this stuff, it'd be a little, a little darker looking. And let's just, let's just load that right in. So we got one corner with it. We're gonna press that corner up here. And that gives us some spiky little bush textures that are going on in there and blocks off the bottom of our tree. And that's pretty much the finish of the landscape, ladies and gentlemen. All we got to do is add ourselves a little dirt here. And shoot, I think, I think there's like a little stick living out here. Living out here. See him? See him? I'm gonna make a little stick tree. It comes out over the water. He's got a little arm. Ooh, careful. Make a mess. You don't have to do this. I'm just having having some fun here with a little little stick tree. Little dead guy. Dead guys are good too. That's nature. Mm, there we go. And, oh yeah, our dirt over here. Loading the rest of the brown that I had up there. And I have to pull this towards me here. Sorry about, sorry about the lighting at the moment. Shoot, let's move our dirt like way Right there, it gets bigger. Almost put my, almost put the bottom of my knife in the pile of blue there. That would have been bad. Well, I mean, I clean it right off, but you know. I mean. Now, then we'll take some of the highlight that we did our tree trunks with, and just, just softly, don't smear, just caress, caress the canvas. Nice, and get yourself some dirt right where it needs to be. Right where it needs to be. Shoot, sometimes it doesn't hurt to throw a little little stone in over here, a little rocky, little rocky thing, you know, some dirt, whatever. Whatever you want to call it. Kind of adds variance to the land. Yeah, there's some up there, wherever. And finally, we'll do a waterline. But right before we do that, we'll just finish those reflections there by pulling them down and across. Watch out for your brown here. Or you can do this before you put the brown in, either way. But just beautiful. Just beautiful. And I think just to accent the beauty of the whites reflecting, take our white brush and I'm going to tap. I'm going to tap where they're reflecting to make it extra white. 
Yeah, like that. Beautiful. Beautiful little scenery. And last but not least, we do a little waterline. A little waterline. I hope you've really enjoyed this one I have. Turned out being way different than I thought it would be. I didn't expect to do these kind of mountains and this distant peak formation. That layer, that layer, that layer. It turned out totally different. That's the way I like to do it. Maybe we'll use our blue, our blue highlight mixture. It's mostly liquid white. And using the corner of the knife first and then flattening it out as we go. We just cut ourselves in. A nice little waterline separates the lights and the darks. See, I made this one going up, so I'm gonna to wanna to fix that real fast. I don't wanna fix that real fast. And I'll just get the white on the end of the knife there, the end that I'm using. And we flatten, flatten that out. Very nice. Touch of pure white there to sparkle it. To sparkle it. And you can add ripples wherever you'd like. Like if you want. My little ripples back here in the distance. Maybe one right here, a bigger one. Ladies and gentlemen, and I think put a little highlight on this little stick guy, and I'll run, I'll run a liner brush through this stick with just a touch of liquid white on it to blend to blend the knife marks together because it's a little a little choppy. We can move our palette out of the way now. We can move our palette out of the way now so you can get a. Nice, good view at this painting we just completed. Yeah. Gonna spin this as I pull it to keep it fine. And I'll pull off a little arm, maybe down there. Maybe it's thicker at the base down here. Just an old dead tree, old dead tree. Right at the center there. Give him a little, give him a little character. And shoot, shoot, that's a nice looking little tree there. Maybe one more touch of our highlight mixture. Just so we can give him a little, just so we can give him a little highlight. Yeah, just trace down the left side of him or whatever side your, the light in your painting is on. If your son's over here, do so, do so. And we can call that a finished painting. I'd like to say thank you very much for anybody who spends as much time as you do with me. And I really appreciate it. Uh, be sure to like the video that helps it spread to more people like you who may also like the video. It shows the algorithm what people think. And if you got value, consider subscribing. I'll be back in the future doing many paintings like this. If you want to support me, check the description below. There's all kinds of ways. There's affiliate links, by Amazon. I get a little commission from that you can get these materials from. I've got a few of them linked down there. And you can also own one of my paintings. And so check out the link for the Etsy shop below. I'll probably be listing this one in a few days. And I also plan on doing a uh, little YouTube shorts of the paintings that I have listed already. It'd be kind of like a virtual gallery. But 
I always think the camera's over there. Let's turn that and get a straight on. Let's get a straight on view before I leave you here. Awesome. Awesome. I think it's a little blank right there, but you can change that if you want to. All right. Thank you so much for watching and I'll be back in the future.